Hello friends, in this video we shall discuss with respect to AEC paper which been conducted by KPCL on 18 February 2024. In this part 2 video we are going to cover from question number 26 to question number 50. In the part 1 video we have already covered from question number 1 to question number 25. If you have not watched that video, links are given in the description. Also you can click on the i button. Also we have solved AE and JE paper of electrical and instrumentation paper also. 26th question what they have given is the hexadecimal equivalent of 10101111. Since they are asking hexadecimal start grouping from the left 4 4 bits we are going to group. 1111 is going to refer it as 1. 1010 means what? A. So the answer should be AF. Third option is AF. So the suitable option that is going to follow is option 3. Nothing but AF in a hexadecimal equals to 10101111 in binary. 27th question what they are asking is we have to specify an example of a small scale embedded system. In the first option they have given printer, second option a DSP, third option multiplexer and the fourth option is IP camera. A digital signal processor is a wrong option. It is not a small scale one. Multiplexer is a combinational circuit. It is a wrong one. IP camera, based on the configuration, uh, we should not come to the conclusion that IP camera is an embedded system. No, camera means it is going to convert that uh, image signal to an electrical signal. That's it. And it will be displayed on the monitor. But the embedded system is the one which will be performing some task, a dedicated task. That is a printer. It can perform copy operation and it can perform scan operation, a print operation, right? So the corresponding option that's going to follow is option one is correct, nothing but printer. 28th question, the type of memory which is suitable for a low volume production of embedded system is referred as. In the first option, they have given a random access memory, a read only memory, volatile memory, and in the fourth option, they have specified non-volatile memory. So for this, you see the type of memory which is uh, suitable for a low volume production is a non-volatile memory. Non-volatile memory, right? You consider a calculator. There you will be having a non-volatile memory. Nothing but uh, the database is of non-volatile, but the size is of a low val, low number only. So option D is going to follow. The pin efficient method of communicating between other devices is referred as parallel port, memory port, peripheral port and serial port. It is referred as what a serial port. Example is RS-232. Option D is going to follow. See this question already we have solved. Uh, this question they have asked even for electrical fellows also. For the following circuit, the values of IC and VCE are given by the options what they have specified is IC equals to 2.92 milliampere and VCE equals to 8.61. Like this they have specified the things. Now the given transistor is a NPN transistor. We have provided the biasing also. There are two modes of operation. One is the transistor may be operating in linear region and the second one is the transistor may be operating in saturation region. We have to justify that the transistor is operating in linear region. How can I justify is see VCE is not equals to 0.2 volts in any of the given option. So the transistor is not operating in saturation region. So the transistor is operating in linear region. The transistor is operating in linear region. Very, very important. Now this is a resistance RB. The current that is getting into this resistor, I'm going to call it as IB, nothing but a base current. This current is flowing through base terminal of NPN transistor. And this is correct. This is collector terminal. So the collector current I'm going to denote by IC. And this is emitter terminal. This emitter terminal is IE, which is equals to IB plus IC, or I can tell IC equals to beta times of IB, so which is equals to 1 plus beta times of IB. Collector current plus base current which is equals to emitter current. But what is the value of IC? Beta times of IB. Straight away I have written in this way. Now 
we shall find the current that is IB by applying KVL to the left loop and we shall find the collector current by applying IC equals to beta times of IB. Next, we are going to find the collector to emitter voltage by applying a KVL to KVL to outer loop, KVL to outer loop, right? Now, if I am applying KVL to the left side loop, what I am going to get is a plus 20 minus 5 10 times of IB. Now, I am not going to write that kilo term. Why I am not going to write the kilo term means, see the resistance is in the order of kilo, then the current will be in the order of milli. The current will be in the order of milli, right? Next, it is a minus 0.7 minus 1.5 times of already I have told that IE equals to IC plus IB, which is equals to 1 plus beta times of IB. Then what is the value of beta under the given? So it is 101 times of IB, which is equals to 0 I am going to get. Now, IB terms, if I am sending on the right side, then the remaining terms that I have left with is a 20 minus 0 0.7, which is a 19.3, which is 19.3, whole divided by 5 10 minus 1.5 times of 101, right? This is corresponding to 661.5 which is equals to what is the value you are going to get 0 0.029 you are going to get 0 0.029 you are going to get so at last what you have to append is a milliampere you are going to append why the resistance is in the order of kilo so it is 0 0.029 milli or I can write it as 29 microamperes also I can also write it as 29 microamperes. Now, we know that the transistor is operating in linear region. So, the collector current which is equals to beta times of IB. What is the value of beta which is equals to 100 multiplied by what is the value of base current? What is the value of base current? It is 0 0.029. It is 0 0.029. So, this is equals to 2.9 milliamperes. So, the value of collector current which is a 2.9 milliamperes. The options here says is a 2.92. Why that second decimal point is varying means a C661.5 something is there. I have neglected it. Because of that, I am going to get this changes. So, the value of collector current is IC which is equals to 2.92 milliamperes. 2.92 milliamperes. Now, look at the values of collector to emitter voltages. Huge difference is there. So, should I solve precisely? No. Rough calculation is uh, more than enough. If I am applying KVL for the outer loop, what I am going to get is plus 20 minus 2.4 times of IC minus the voltage drop is VCE minus 1.5 times of 1.5 times of see already we have calculated what is the value of ie the value of ie is ib plus ic which is equals to 2.929 milliamperes right which is equals to zero what is the value of collector current i'm going to get 2.9 milli now Sending this VCE term on the right side, what I am going to get is VCE which is equals to 8.64 volts we are going to get. Roughly or approximately it is 8.61 volts. The corresponding option that is going to follow is option A is correct. How we have calculated is first KVL for the left loop, then KVL for the right side loop. So, KVL for the input loop, if I am applying, then I am going to get the value of base current that is IB. With the help of IB, I have calculated the values of IC. You can calculate the values of IE also. Then KVL for the output loop, what you are going to get is VCE which is equal to 8.64 volts or approximately 8.61 volts also you can take, which is option A is correct. 
In 31st question, what they are asking is the cascade amplifier is a multi-stage configuration of, let us get into the option, common collector followed by common base configuration, common emitter followed by common base configuration, common base followed by common collector, common emitter followed by common collector configuration. In the key answer, they, they have specified common emitter followed by common base. This is wrong. This is a CAS code configuration. In the case of cascade, you are going to make use of, you are going to make use of common emitter followed by common collector configuration. In the case of common emitter configuration, you will be having uh, the medium input resistance and the medium output resistance. But in the case of common collector configuration, even though the voltage gain is unity, the input impedance is high and the output impedance is low. So, common collector configuration is used for impedance matching purpose. Option D is going to follow. Even this question they have repeated for uh, electrical fellows. See, this is a 4 is to 1 multiplexer. A and B are selectants. Say, suppose A value is 0, B value is 0. A value is 0, B value is 1. A value is 1, B value is 0. A value is 1, B value is 1. These are all four combinations you have, you can able to generate. Why? Two inputs, two power two combinations you are going to derive. When uh, it is 0, 0, I0 will be selected, I0 value is C. When it is 0, 1, I1 value will be selected, then the input is C bar. When it is 1, 0, I2 will be selected, then the output will be C. When it is 1, 1, input is a C bar, it will be driven to the output. Now look at the things. In the first two element, I am going to take A bar as com common. You are going to get a B bar C plus B C bar. In the third and fourth element, you are going to take, so here you are going to take A as common. So you are left with a B bar C plus B C bar. When you are taking A plus A bar, the common elements are B bar C plus B C bar. What is A plus A bar means it is 1. What is A plus A bar? It is 1. So, we will be getting B bar C plus B C bar which is equals to B XR with C. Let us get into the option. They have given specific, they have given it as A C, A XR with C, B C, B XR with C. So, the answer for this 32nd question is B XR with C option 4. 33rd question, the frequency of output of 8 flip-flops with input frequency which is equals to 512 kilo. 8 flip-flops are there. 512 divided by 2 power 8 we are going to make. 512 divided by 2 power 8 is how much? 256 kilo. Which will be yielding to 2 kilohertz. The output is a 2 kilohertz. Option D is going to follow. Now look at the things. See, the flip-flop will be acting like a counter, divide by 2 counter. Suppose in the first stage, if the input frequency is 10 kilo, for the second stage, it will be divided by 2, 5 kilo. And for the next stage, it will be 2.5. Next stage, it will be 1.25. Like this, we should calculate the frequency. In the next question, what they are given is, see, this question is based on POS logic. How we are going to represent POS means a pi m of, pi m of. Now look at the things, if you are not writing the complement, if you are not writing the complement, then it is a false logic. If you have written the complement, then it is a true logic. So you have to read it as a 0, 1, 0, nothing but 2. 1, 1, 0, 6. 0, 1, 1, it is a 3. So in the case of POS, in the case of POS, it is a 2, 6, 3. We know that the parser is functionally equivalent to SOP. The expression you are going to get the same. I am not telling the parse terms are equivalent to soft terms. I am telling the soft terms are functionally equivalent to parse terms, which is equal to summation m of the remaining values you are going to write. 0, 1, 2, 3 already written, 4, 5 and 7. So it is option B is going to follow. If I want to prove it, how you have to solve is make use of KMAP. In the case of SOP, SOP, you have to group for ones. In the case of POS, you have to group for zeros. 
you have to group for zeros very very important so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option b is correct in the sixth question what they have given is we have to find the value of y nothing but we have to get the expression of y this is and gate so the output of and gate is a bar b this is an inverter b is the input output is b bar or gate output is b bar plus c b bar plus c and get output what you're going to get a into b this is one term into b bar plus c which is a into b into b bar plus a into b into c what is b into b bar which is zero why say suppose b equals to zero then b bar will become one zero multiplied by one is zero only if b equals to 1, then b bar will be equals to 0. Then also you are going to get the value as a 0 only. So what is the term that is left out is ABC. Is it not easy? ABC. Corresponding option that is going to follow is option C is correct. These kind of questions, if you are taking more than 5 seconds to solve, then somewhere you will be out of race. Till now, if you have followed the solution video, please give it a big thumbs up. The number of select lines required in the single input and n output demultiplexer is. Single input and n output demultiplexer is. This is very, very important. Now, what I am telling is, see, in the case of multiplexer, 2 power n input should be there, only 1 output should be there. 2 power n inputs, 1 output and n select lines should be there. Now, in this, this question is somewhere uh, like Im improper. One input will be there. How many output means you will be having 2 power n outputs? How many select lines you will be having means there are n select lines. There are n select lines. This is the actual definition of demultiplexer. But what they are telling is we are not having a 2 power n outputs. Instead, we are having only n outputs. Assume that the value of n is 4. How many select lines are required means a 2 select lines are more than enough. 2 select lines are more than enough. Right? Now, again, say suppose, say suppose the output should be 5 then the select line should be 3. Like this, if you are solving, the question seems to be improper. The output should be 2 power n, then the number of select lines is how much? The number of select lines is n. Let us uh, slightly modify the first option. In the first option, they would have given like this, log to the base 2 into 2 power n, into 2 power n. So, what is this value? So it is n log of 2 base 2, which is equals to n, which is equals to n. Strictly speaking, option A should follow with slight modification. But they have given the n output demultiplexer. Then the outputs are, what is the range? 1, 4, 9, 16, 32, like this you will be having. Then the number of uh, select lines required is log n to the base 2. Log n to the base 2. So, option D is going to follow in the way what they have given. In the way what they have given. But the definition of demultiplexer is one input should be there. Then 2 power n outputs will be having based on the n select lines. The input will be driven to the corresponding output. It is serial to parallel converter. Multiplexer is parallel to serial converter. The Thevenin's output voltage and the resistance of the following circuit is given by. So let us get into the option also. This one, no, uh, the Thevenin's uh, we are going to calculate with respect to RL resistor. Let us find the Thevenin's voltage first, which is also specified as open circuit voltage or if you are taking the terminals as a b then this will be voltage across a b first thing is we are going to remove this rl resistor so removing the rl resistor 
try to apply nodal analysis at this point. What is the thing we are going to consider means all the currents are leaving the node. Left side current is a VTH minus 20 divided by 24 plus 2. Right side current is 0. So what is the value you are going to get? VTH minus 20 plus 48 which is equals to 0. So you are going to get the value of VTH or open circuit voltage as minus 28 volts. Option 1 is going to follow. If you want to find the Thevenin's resistance, if you want to find the Thevenin's resistance, how you are going to find the Thevenin's resistance means all the voltage sources need to be considered as a short circuit and all the current source need to be considered as an open circuit. So what you are going to get 24 ohms is the only one thing you will be getting. Why the current source need to be treated as open circuit. The current source need to be treated as open circuit and the voltage source need to be treated as short circuit. So looking at this uh, RL point, what is the resistance that is offered which will be 24 ohms which is same as a uh, Norton's impedance also or Norton's resistance also. Option 1 is going to follow. In the 38th question, the position of stack pointer after performing reset operation is 0, 7 h Direct question they have given. Option C is going to follow. 39th question, internal RAM address of SCON register in the case of 8051 microcontroller is a 908H. Sorry, 98H. Option B is going to follow. 40th question, the status of auxiliary carry flag and parity flag after performing the addition instruction. See 9CH we are going to take and 64H we are going to perform addition. Let us convert into binary and let us solve. 9 means what 1001. C means what 1100. Nothing but 12. 6 means what 0110. 4 means what 0100. When you perform addition, what is the thing you are going to get means 1 plus 1 is what a 0 1. 1 plus 1 is what a 0 1. So you are going to get something like this 0 1, 0 1, 0. At last you will be getting one carry flag. That one you are going to drag it. Now there is a carry from lower nipple to upper nipple. So this is going to indicate auxiliary flag. So auxiliary flag is 1 <clears throat> auxiliary flag is 1 now in this 8 bit how many even number of ones are there what is the condition of parity flag parity flag the status will be 1 when will be having even parity even parity or even number of ones or even number of ones when the parity flag value or the contents will be zero means when it is odd parity when it is odd parity so based on this option c is going to follow 41st question indicate which of the following register is not bit addressable it is not byte addressable it is a bit addressable accumulator a b is a bit addressable even program status word is also bit addressable r7 you can't point it so the answer is option C, nothing but R7 register. Which of the following statement is true? For second question, the root locus is symmetrical about real axis is correct, but it is not symmetrical about uh, imaginary axis. Option A is wrong. The root locus starts at a zero and terminates at pole they are asking. If they would have asked for inverse root locus, then this option would have been correct. The break of a point must lie on root locus. Yes, break of a point by default it will lie on root locus only. Option C is correct. The number of root locus point approaching to infinity is equal to number of poles. Even this option is also wrong. Option C is going to follow. Straight away question from root locus topic they have asked. The largest error between the reference input and output during the transient period is a called as during the transient period is a called as right so like this you will be getting so this is referred as what this is referred as what peak error transient overshoot peak overshoot and a transient deviation so it is referred as what peak overshoot mp 
फोर्टी फोर्थ क्वेश्चन सिंपल क्वेश्चन नो नीड टू साल्व स्ट्रेट अवे यू कैन गो फॉर ग्रेस मार्क्स बट इन द की आंसर्स दे हैव गिवन सेकंड ऑप्शन व्हिच इज रॉन्ग वेयर इज एच वन टर्म एंड वेयर इज जी थ्री टर्म एंड वेयर इज जी फोर टर्म एंड मोर ओवर इन द फॉरवर्ड पाथ यू कैनॉट गेट द जी थ्री टर्म यू कैनॉट गेट द जी थ्री टर्म सो ऑल फोर ऑप्शन आर रॉन्ग ऑप्शन इज अ नन गो फॉर ग्रेस मार्क्स फोर्टी फिफ्थ क्वेश्चन सिस्टम विथ मेमोरी कैन बी कैरेक्टर्स्ड बाय लीनियर इक्वेशन डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन डिफरेंस इक्वेशन बोथ बी एंड सी यस बोथ बी एंड सी इज करेक्ट नथिंग बट ऑप्शन डी इज गोइंग टू फॉलो फोर्टी सिक्स क्वेश्चन इफ एच ऑफ टी इज द इंपल्स रेस्पॉन्स ऑफ द काज एंड लीनियर टाइम इनवेरियंट कंटिन्यूस सिस्टम द आउटपुट वै ऑफ टी इज गिवन बै वैल सालविंग ऐ मेड अ मिस्टेक फॉर इलेक्ट्रिकल फेलोस This is option A. Nothing but integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of lambda into h of t minus lambda into d lambda. Forty seventh question: If the impulse response of a system is over a finite duration, then it is referred as moving average system, auto aggressive system, auto aggressive moving average system, and infinite impulse response system. Right. So this is referred as a moving average system. Nothing but option a is going to follow 48th question see when you are performing that sum by column method is there no say suppose uh, x value is uh, filter coefficients 1 2 3 and uh, h value filter coefficient is 1 2 then how you are going to perform means uh, like this you are going to write 1 2 3 then you are you are going to get 2 4 6 6 then you are going to perform like this right hmm. so you are going to get a 1 4 7 Then six, four values you'll be getting. So this is referred as output sequence, input sequence, both input and output sequence are the overlapped output. What we are going to do? So we are going to perform the overlap and save algorithm in case of the input sequence. Option B is going to follow. Forty ninth question: A dash is going to perform the linear conversion of the received optical signal into an electrical signal. A receiver, converter, detector, and reflector. They have specified. So don't get confused with respect to a transducer. Say suppose if they have given an option as a transducer, right? Then it is not an optical signal. It is a non-electrical signal to electrical signal. That's it. So here we are going to make use of a detector. Fiftieth question. Following the lambda-based design concept leads to layouts which exploit the capabilities of process. Layouts which do not fully exploit the capabilities of process, tighter layouts, and the fourth option is none of the above. See, lambda-based design rules are given for a minimum specifications that you need to be followed. Nothing but layouts which do not fully exploit the capabilities of the process. Right? Option B is going to follow. So friends in this video we have discussed from question number 26 to question number 50 in the next part of the video we are going to cover from question number 51 to question number 75 if you have understood all this solution video please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel craving gyan all the best for exams thank you